the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments. Wow. You know, I am not unaccustomed to public speaking, but I, un I am unaccustomed to applause. <laughs> not really when I get done, it's dead silence. Anyways, uh, welcome to the Queen City and the 12th Annual Ohio Conference on Freight. I'd like for all of you to stand right now so we can say the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate it. OKI has been a longtime leader in advancing freight on this region's level. And we've also been a very strong advocate of freight on the national stage. That's why we're so proud to host this year's conference in partnership with the Ohio Association of Regional Councils. Of course, we wouldn't be here without the outstanding support of our presenting partners, Jobs Ohio and the Ohio Department of Transportation. Also, a big thank you goes out to our peer agencies and program partners, the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission and the Northeast Ohio Area-Wide Coordinating Agency. And finally, we thank and really for their support all year long, our keynote partners, CSX and Norfolk Southern. Over the course of this conference, I know you'll be exposed to extraordinary and relevant topics discussed by insightful speakers that solicited your valued comments. Your participation in this conference is critical in building the record and the legacy of this conference. And to thank you for your engagement, We'll have a drawing of five really cool prizes tomorrow at our luncheon at the conclusion of the keynote. I only wish I were eligible for the iPad and the wireless earplugs, uh, and uh, not earplugs, earphones, I guess, uh, the Delta gift card, uh, and other prizes. So all you have to do to win one of these prizes is be at the luncheon, drop your card in a box, sit back, and uh, wait to collect your prize, or not. As we begin this conference, I would just like to offer a quick thought. This conference has experienced, I think, two evolutions in the past 12 years. First, to be honest with ourselves, there is no such thing as an Ohio conference on freight. In the world's first true global economy, freight from its development to its delivery cannot be limited to a state, to a region, or even to a country. It was not that long ago that supply chains were defined by county lines. Now they're defined by continents. It was not that long ago that goods were defined by being local or regional or state or even by country. Now we know that there is not a good, a good produced anywhere in the world that cannot or does not have a vendor or a customer in a foreign land. In today's economy, Every conference on freight truly has the world as its audience. The second evolution over the past 12 years gets to the very question of why are we here? Back at the first conference, much of the time was dedicated to understanding what freight was and trying to appreciate why it was so important. Literally speakers had to define for a very educated audience what a freight network was. This 2018 conference on freight has evolved into trying to find a specific set of solutions to define problems that in no way go less than beyond how to get goods from point A to point B. Discussions now of freight must talk about challenges of truck parking, the integration of on-demand vehicles into the freight network, how people get their groceries, worker shortages causing severe disruptions to freight delivery, the use of technology from robots to drones to augment freight and blockchain, an invention that many believe is the solution to several of these problems. Freight is the lifeblood of our commerce, therefore our communities, and therefore our countries. We've come a long way, but we have only just started the journey in finding where freight and all its permutations 
will lead us. And come tomorrow, at the end of this conference, we'll be further along on that journey. All thanks to the expertise and to you and your insights and contributions that you make. Accordingly, enjoy Ohio's most beautiful city, our region's many wondrous attractions. Enjoy the open bar this evening. <laughs> and most of all, the wondrous discussions that we will have on all things freight in 2018. And now I'd like to introduce one of our presenting partners, Milan Perenspey, who is with Jobs Ohio. Melend is the Director of Information Technology and Logistics and Distribution Industries. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Melend. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? Did you enjoy the tour last night or the baseball game? Some of you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in Cincinnati. On behalf of Jobs Ohio, Ted Griffith, who is uh, sitting right there, uh, and I would like to welcome you to the 12th Ohio Conference on Freight. Thank you for joining us in Cincinnati. Jobs Ohio's mission is to attract and grow economy in nine key industries. Advanced manufacturing, aerospace and aviation, automotive, energy and chemicals, financial services, food and agribusiness, healthcare, information technology, logistics and distribution. To say that logistics and distribution is an important industry for the Ohio is uh, an understatement. I'm saying this because since 2011, most addition of jobs happened in logistics and distribution industry in Ohio. 15% or 16,000 jobs, more than the second largest adder, which is automotive industry. I have a little story to share about logistics and distribution employment in Ohio. As many of you may remember, a decade before 2011 was tough for the industry. Ohio lost about 4,000 jobs in that decade. In 2012, for the first time actually, Ohio surpassed the employment numbers as they were in 2001. So it took a long time to get where we were in 2001. Knowing this, let's talk about the logistics and distribution projects in which Jobs Ohio participated since 2013. Would it surprise you if I say 80% of the jobs in Ohio, which is about 19,000 jobs, were created by e-commerce businesses? Not just that, majority of those jobs were created by businesses who were outside of Ohio. So they were not homegrown. And we thank you for they choosing the Ohio as their destination, as their home for the e-commerce businesses. This is an exciting time to be part of the logistics and distribution industry. E-commerce is growing fast, really, really fast. And Ohio sure has seen success in this fast growing segment. I would like to thank all of you, actually. You are the biggest contributor, the people sitting in this room who are from the industry. You are the one who are creating infrastructure and services to attract these businesses. I'm sure there are many reasons why these businesses chose to make Ohio their home. Another big reason I would say is policies, like tax policies. It's interesting to know and important to know that policies like sales tax exemption on equipment used in the distribution centers. If the primary use of the equipment is to handle inventory which goes outside Ohio, the equipment is actually sales tax exempt in Ohio. It is important to, to acknowledge those policies. Last but not least, the reliable workforce. National media like CNBC took a note when they made a story about future of the e-commerce in Ohio, they talked about reliable workforce 
and they talked about how important it is to the industry's growth in the state. We thank that workforce, we thank all of you who are contributing to that. Without such reliable workforce, we would not have seen such growth. What is also important is, can this remain an attractive destination going forward? We think so. We expect Ohio to remain that attractive destination for that business. Consider this, a new segment, e-grocery. Would it surprise you if I say e-grocery sales in US, 52% of that actually came from eight states only. Not just that, to be precise, it came from dense urban markets within these eight states. If you think about that, guess what? 27% of that is actually eight hour or less drive from Ohio. The final mile, as they say, counts in this segment. Another fast growing thing within the e-commerce even. And Ohio is in a great position to offer that proximity to dense urban markets to our customers. I'm sure we all have, you all have such interesting stories and tidbits to share. I would like to end with what Neil Gaiman has said. We owe it to each other to tell stories. Please share your story with at least three people you have not met before at this conference. Please take time to do that. If we can be of any help, Ted and I am here at this conference, happy to help to grow your business in Ohio. And with that, I would say, enjoy the conference. Have a great time. Thank you. That was really informative. Thank you. Now I have the pleasure of introducing a distinguished fellow and a good friend. Um, I'm a chair of the Ohio Rail Development Commission and this fellow and his company appear for us often. Always well prepared, always know the answer to all the scintillating questions we direct at him. Uh, he is the manager of government relations for Norfolk Southern. Please welcome Brian Thomas, who will introduce our keynote speaker for this morning. Mark, I'm not sure that all those words are true, but I uh, accept them nonetheless. Um, and good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 2018 Conference on Freight. As Mark said earlier, my name is Brian Thomas, and I'm the Manager of Government Relations for Norfolk Southern here in the great state of Ohio. Um, I'm happy to be here in Cincinnati once again um, for the conference and to introduce our keynote speaker. Mark, let me add to the long list of those giving ringing endorsements of how great this conference has been over the years and seems to keep getting better and better. Uh, Mark and his wonderful team at OKI continue to do a tremendous job. Um, be sure to thank them when you see them floating around. I look forward to attending many, many more. And just a few words about Norfolk Southern. We are one of the nation's premier transportation companies operating almost 20,000 route miles in 22 states and the District of Columbia, including 2,200 miles of track here in Ohio. Projects such as our Rickenbacker Intermodal Terminal, as well as our yard at Bellevue, Ohio, now the largest classification yard in our network, underscore Norfolk Southern's commitment to making Ohio the business and transportation hub of the region. Our network allows us to serve every major port container, uh, major container port in the eastern United States, connecting Ohio and the rest of the world, providing companies both large and small with the service needed to keep pace with the ever-evolving landscape of fra freight transportation. And there are few people better versed to speak on what the distribution network of tomorrow will look like than today's keynote speaker. 
Uber is redefining mobility, and their innovation extends to the world of freight. We are fortunate to have our first keynote speaker, the general manager of Uber Freight, Mr. Sager Shah. Based out of Chicago, Mr. Shah oversees the account management, central operations, support functions of Uber Freight. His experience at Uber has spanned the last four years, where he previously served as a general manager on the core rides business, launching and managing operations across multiple states in the Midwest. During his time at Uber, Mr. Shah has built experience across operational growth initiatives, organiza organizational designs, product solutions, and policy and regulatory matters. Prior to joining Uber, he worked on several efforts to build and advise early stage startup companies from inception he began his career in principal investing in finance, where he developed strategic plans and advised corporate clients across industries. Mr. Shah holds a BA in mathematics from economics from Cornell and an MBA from the University of Chicago, so he's very much smarter than I am. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Sager Shah of Uber Freight. 